Hi, and welcome to this video, which will look at choosing an EC2, an Amazon Web Service instance type, that best fits your needs. You may already have launched some Amazon instances, but you'll probably have noticed there's a huge range, a bewildering range, of instance types you can choose from. Which one's best for you? You don't want to be underpowered. You don't want to be lacking the basic computing and storage resources that you need to provide your service. But on the other hand, you don't want to be overpowered. You don't want to pay too much. And paying too much in the long run can actually add up to an awful lot of money and can mean the difference between a successful and an unsuccessful business venture. You've got to get it right. So how do you choose? Let's start at the EC2 dashboard. There's the big blue button towards the left in the middle that allows us to launch an instance, which brings us to what is probably a familiar screen where we can choose between operating systems. We're going to choose the Ubuntu Server 14.04 LTS, as we have in the past. Now we reach the Instance Type screen, and here things get a whole lot more complicated. There are instance types, for instance, T1, M3 medium, M3 large, and they have descriptions. They're part of families. General purpose, compute optimized, GPU instance, memory optimized, storage optimized, which is best for your particular needs. Of course, only you can answer that. Only you know the specific needs of your task. For instance, are you going to require a great deal of storage space? Is your database going to grow and grow very quickly? Are your logs going to grow? I've seen log files on systems that span across terabytes. So do you need to keep your logs? How much computing power are you going to need? How many visitors are going to be coming to your site each hour? What are they going to be doing? Are they going to be performing a lot of reads and writes against your database? Again, these are questions only you can answer. Let's look, however, at the various families of instance that Amazon makes available. There's first Micro, which, as you can figure out from the name, is a very inexpensive but rather underpowered option. This is good for, for a blog or a small personal website. General is an attempt to balance as many potential needs as possible into relatively small, relatively lightweight, but relatively cheap profiles of computing power. Compute focuses on raw computing power, a large number of virtual CPUs, uh, high CPU speeds. These can be useful for high-traffic websites or high-performance science and engineering applications. The memory family focuses on high memory availability, which can be useful for performance-sensitive databases. The storage family, obviously, provides a greater volume of storage space what we would call hard drives. Actually, almost all the Amazon instances right now use solid-state drives, which provide a much, much quicker read-write response time. And finally, GPU, graphic processing units, which probably won't interest us, but are very important if you're providing a video gaming experience. For uh, up-to-date details on each of these families and each of these instant types, you may want to take a look at the Amazon webpage aws.amazon.com slash ec2 slash instance types. One of the metrics used to measure and describe the power of a particular Amazon instance is the EC2 compute unit. An instance might be described as having five EC2 compute units or ECUs or 10 ECUs or 20 ECUs. What is an ECU? Well, it seems, unless it's been updated, but it seems that Amazon considers one ECU as the equivalent of, a, of the CPU capacity of a 1 to 1.2 gigahertz 
Opteron or Xeon processor from 2007. So if you have a sense yourself of the kind of power that will provide, or if you want to Google the, uh, the Xeon and Opteron processors that were available around 2007 and look up the specs and the performance statistics uh, that, that are associated with those processors, you'll get a feel for one ECU, one EC2 compute unit. Finally, and this is good news, the Amazon system, and really the cloud computing system in general, even beyond Amazon, allows you to change very quickly, upwards or downwards, the computing profile that you've chosen. If it turns out that this isn't working out for you, there isn't enough power, there's too much power, you can adjust it quite, quite simply. How will you know when things aren't working out, well, the most obvious symptom will be customers calling you or emailing you and telling you that the website's not responding the way it's supposed to. You really shouldn't let it get that far. You should test it yourself regularly. Log into your own website to make sure that it's providing the performance that you expect. But there are some more direct and focused tools to keep track of how your instance is performing. Let's log in to our instance through a terminal, through SSH, and run the command top. You see there's not a lot going on in this instance, there's really nothing running, but very often you would see some of these columns rather than, let's say, the percentage of CPU, that the percentage of the CPU which is currently being used, it wouldn't be at 0.0 percent, it might be at 99 percent, or it can go over 100 percent. It's It does that sometimes when the, the computer is a bit overstressed. Or memory, the percentage of the memory, the RAM in the system that's being used, wouldn't be at 7.1 percent or 0.5 percent, it could be at 99 percent or over. If you see slowdowns on your website and you run a program like TOP from the command line, and you see that there is a particularly high stress level on your CPU or your memory or on other resources of your computer, of the instance that you're running, then it's a pretty decent indication that you may need to beef up the profile and choose a more powerful instance. If, on the other hand, you check and you see results like this, where there's virtually no stress against the CPU and on memory, then maybe you're overpowered and maybe you could use a lower powered instance. In any case, we've scratched the surface, barely scratched the surface. There are many details that really should go into the calculation of what sort of instance you need, but I think we provided the overview to point you in the direction that, uh, that might allow you to do your own research and get to your own specific unique answer in an intelligent and economical way. We hope to see you next time for the next video.